Hello, I've recently obtained the services of a local fine artist in the um, translating of free print and play games into a physical form. So he doesn't do the designing or the authorship of the game, but he puts them into a form so that I can enjoy it. Um, so he recently completed the, the uh, first of these, and I just want to show it to you here. Um, this is the World in Four Axis, done by, uh, designed by uh, Lloyd Warp Spawn. Warp Spawn Games, he's does a ton of stuff. Um, I don't, I haven't played any of his games, but I really liked this name, and so it was in the the packet of choices. Uh, since I was working with a fine artist, I thought it'd be good for him to have choices about what games he would do and how he would do them. I think um, that that seems to work better for creative types than uh, maybe the uh, an artist who's in the more graphic design um, end of things is more willing to, to make to order, but a fine artist is going to kind of work with their heart a little more. So, um, here we have the World of 4X. He made the box. Um, this is kind of a foam core with some tape. Um, obviously, he stenciled the letters. And then he kind of created his own sort of box. I don't know if I've seen any of these in commercial production, um, but it comes off like that. And then this unfolds. So you can just pick up the deck like so. Rather large deck. Um, so although he's typically not in graphic design, he did do some graphic design type work, uh, which is kind of what games tend to be, tend to invite, right? Uh, more graphic design type work because it's it's tends to be something mass producible. Um, I'm interested in um, maybe creating an arrangement whereby they're they're maybe not so mass producible, or maybe the ideas are mass producible, but the actual forms are unique. Um, he 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 made something that is reproducible, however, uh, kind of thin, thin cards. I think in part because um, the cost of creating the cards came out of how much I paid him. Um, all right, and so we have different decks here, and the deck symbols. I think he got these. He he he. He went into great detail about his methodology, but he got these offline and just kind of arranged them. This is some font. He didn't write that by hand. Um, and any kind of symbol you see here, I'm going to just show you some cards, are things that I think he just got off of line. But he did quite a lot of research in order to find the images for all these different concepts. So the world of four acts, it goes through four acts, you know, so here we have the ancient act. Um, and then it has just different things and then some very abstract numbers. So here um, is an example of where he actually did some line drawings. So he did a lot of line drawings for this. Um, we have Alexander the Great here. This is not a line drawing. This is Cleopatra. So anytime you see like a, a figure, um, that's something he actually drew. And that makes sense because he likes drawing. Um, it's nice though, you can look close on this and you can see some, some rather nice touches here. Process of roads. You can see a big difference between the stuff he just pulled offline and the stuff he actually did by hand. Um, definitely got what I paid for, if not more so, in terms of his work on this. Here's Confucius. Yeah, that's, that's pretty special, I think. Julius Caesar, Conquest, um, Sun Tzu. Okay, let's move ahead, jump ahead. Baby Jesus here. In Gardens of Babylon. Great wall. I like that he, he wasn't afraid to show Jesus naked. Uh, Hammurabi. So that's some, some people from the ancient times. Um, we'll jump ahead to medieval. That would be the second act of the game. Again, we have symbols that he researched. Um, and, you know, I don't know if they're all, like, some interesting choices, though. Uh, that's the printing press. I don't know if all the symbols are like, totally you know, for the thing. I think there's some interpretation, but he definitely spent a lot of time on this. So one of the reasons I'm showing you this is because you might be able to find someone in your community who's willing to do something along these lines. Um, and then, of course, the, the additional step to get the economic model down would be to kick back some money also to the, the author as well. Um, here's Ivan the Great. There's a, uh, you know, I find there are a lot of um, fine artists whose, whose talents aren't really being used. And you might be able to find someone and tap into that. 
troops, harquebusers, Sistine Chapel. That's a line drawing of the Sistine Chapel there. Really nice. The Medici family. Conquistadors. Alright, let's jump ahead again to the revolution. I uh, had some fun with the font here. He used a rather romantic font. Um, see these hearts there? That's nice. Um, all these icons. Of course, he didn't draw those, but those are ones he got. Um, he painted and arranged with uh, particular reasons for everything he does. There's, there's meaning in between. Um, and even these like small choices, there's some meaning or some interest there, um, even though they aren't, you know, images he created. But the juxtaposition of the name and the the image are are him, and show a sort of vision or sort of an, uh, a sort of intent, I guess would maybe be the better word. Dragoons, that's some line drawing. Riflemen. And this is the first time I'm really looking at this, that's why I didn't have it sorted out. He's shown me some of the images on the computer, but um, I'm looking at the game for the first time here. Musketeers. He's actually interested in playing it now that he spent so much time with it. Cavalry. Um, I'm excited for the next game he's working on. Here's Eiffel Tower, that's a line drawing. You can, you can tell um, the difference there. Suez Canal, Transcontinental Railroad. So here we're getting into, you know, he's going away from Drawing more, th more and more things that aren't just figures. Taj Mahal. Um, and I like to think that it's maybe nice for him as an artist too to have to, to stretch in these ways that he would normally not. You know, I don't know if he ever considered drawing a, pic a portrait of Voltaire for Lincoln. Very nice Lincoln there. You really see a man who has some experiences um, written on his face. Newton. Napoleon. All right, and we'll move to the modern times. I really like the, the selection of symbols he chose for the modern times. Um, speaks to me, speaks to my heart. Um, oh, here's the victory deck. That was, this was like his least favorite part, I think, was doing the victory deck. It's just points, I think. Um, submarines. And I have to say, you know, the, having the game like this is going to make this game a whole lot more fun to me. I can't say anything about the game's design. I haven't even read the rules yet. Um, but just looking at it, you know, it's not going to be... I mean, I guess it, it, it's, it's like an extreme condensation of, of a portion of human history, right? Uh, great title, though. World in Four Acts is a wonderful title. Here we have Mechanized Infantry. Um, Alfred Hitchcock. Here's an actual uh, name choice. He he changed, um, I think, Picasso to Hitchcock because uh, I think he didn't feel like Picasso had this strong of, a, of an effect. He thought Hitchcock was maybe a better choice. Uh, moon landing, the Pentagon. And, I, and we talked about it. I said that was totally fine. Um, Canal, Hoover Dam. Uh, most, most artists I've talked to don't believe Picasso has had such a large effect. He was a popular figure. <laughs> Hitler, Hitler pictures are Stalin there. Occupation. <laughs> so, so here's an example of some interesting choices he made. Insurgency, there we go. Uh, War and Terror, <laughs> War and Terror, the crime watch symbol for those of you watching overseas. That's the, if you're walking around, um, in certain neighborhoods in the United States, you'll see that as the crime watch, the Great War. We have Uncle Sam, Holocaust, the swastika there, assassination. This is a this is great. I really like that. So he's working on a duo of games. He's about done. Last time I talked to him, um, right now, about uh, Henry and Bloody Mary. Um, takes place during the 1500s, another free print and play. Really interesting stuff with that one that I've seen so far. I'm excited to show you that. So as soon as he has that done, it should be next month, I'll be doing another one of these unboxings. Um, definitely excited to play this. World in Four Acts, hand done for the most part. 
Very good. I strongly recommend finding someone who's willing to do this for you because I certainly am not so good at production and I think even if I was, this is maybe a little bit more special. Well, it's, yeah, it's more special to have this kind of um, intense uh, uh, realization of, of a game of this nature. Um, warp Spine games, they, they just, they pump them out. Um, there is just all sorts of designs, so I don't know. I, I imagine there was a lot more, uh, a lot more time spent directly on the implementation of this game than maybe on its design. Um, but definitely worthwhile. I recommend it. You unbox, unbox.